Hola a todos and welcome to another video of our series of Julia videos for programmers or as I call it, the Julia Journey Juggling Jargons Joyfully series. In this video, which might have been split into more parts, I'm going to talk about the development of a new package in Julia. It is a larger video because building a package has many moving parts and I want to do it most of it in a single run. Uh, you're going to find it very easy compared to other languages. Uh, but of course, you still have to do a lot of things to make your package installable in other places. Let me know if you release a new package using the information here. You can post your package in the comments with a short description. It might be useful for other people to know that uh, this video worked. Or if you found something that is not up to date, you can also leave it in the comments and I can uh, maybe add to the description. So the first thing that we want to do is to navigate to the folder that we're going to create our package. Uh, we're going to open Julia. And we want to install the package templates package. I already have it installed. If you don't know how to install packages, you just press the close brackets and you write add package templates. Or in the latest Julia versions, you can just say using package templates and it will automatically ask if you want to install it. Uh, by the way, I have it installed in my global environment. So that's something that you might want to do or just use a temporary environment. So after using package templates, we are gonna call the function generate and we're gonna give our package name. So in our case, we are doing the dice rows from the uh, one of our episodes, episode about struct. Uh, and this is where the fun starts. The package templates is interactive, so you can choose what you want to modify. If you just say done, if you press the D, key it's not going to modify anything uh i recommend if you want to really understand what's going on to look into all of these things uh i have never done that though but uh, well you might find it interesting the two that i want to modify are the deer so i go to deer here navigating enter and the plugins because i want to add a few things more then i press d for done so this is the first difference between what i do and the suggested things I like to install my package in the current folder. I separate them uh, because I have like dozens of packages. I separate them in my folders. Uh, and the Julia dev is the suggested place to add all of these things. I prefer to organize them myself. So as you see here, I have a personal projects and then a folder for Julia journey and then episode seven package. So I'm organizing here. And to say here in, in Bash, this is Linux, I just, just press dot. And now you have to choose the plugins that package templates allows you to install. Uh, the default ones we're gonna leave as it is, Compat Helper, Project File, don't want to go into details. Some of these are obvious, some I will talk about. Uh, but the new things that I want to add are, in, and I suggest you add as well, Either code cov or coveralls for code coverage. I have been using code cov for a while, but I use coveralls a lot also, so don't think it matters too much. And I also want to use the documenter plugin, which gives me the documentation basics. You can see that there are many other uh, choices here for CI, and there is something called citation. Uh, as far as I remember, is this is the citation.bib for the bib tag. I'm currently using citation.cff. I'll link a video in the top if you want to create your citation.cff. i explain a little bit more there. After choosing everything, in this case, I just want to select the code covering documenter. I'm going to press D for done. Now the package template is asking for me to detail the plugins. I will mostly press done for these plugins. Uh, so I don't want to modify the compat helper, the project file, the source there, the git. I'm going to leave as it is. The license is one that I commonly change. So for instance, at work, we use Apache 2. Uh, I sometimes used uh, LGPL for some packages that depend on, on other LGPL or GPL internal code. Uh, the default license for Julia packages is the MIT license. For registering your package, you need a license, an open source license. And I think it has to be one of the open source initiative licenses. So bear that in mind, you can just create whatever you want here. I'm not going to change anything now. I'm just say done. Uh, for the readme, I'm also going to say done. The tests done. 
tag box done github actions done uh, code cov as well done and here is the first thing that i actually want to change the documenter uh well i actually have to choose not change and you want to choose how to deploy the documentation if you are using github actions it's it's better to just select github actions by default makes your life much easier and done in the documentary details after a few seconds you have a complete new package you can review everything that was changed here uh, you actually create a template if you want uh, if you want to apply this for other packages i just prefer to have the basic here and then investigate what's going on uh, from here you should open your new package uh, in vs code i i recommend I, I use Ctrl K, Ctrl O to open the project and I navigate to the right place. So this is our default project folder. If you look into project Tomo, you can see that the name Dice Rose has been defined. So from last video, we talked about uh, the project Tomo. For a project, you have to define the name. You have to define a UUID. Uh, and I think that the things that you, you have to define a version as well. The alters might be optional i don't remember but yeah of course you might want to define that uh, currently the only compact thing that we have is the julia version we don't have any packages and we have two new things which are the extras and the targets so when we test so this keyword test when we test it's gonna need the package test that's an extra package is not part of our main package the alternative would be to instead of having these extra and targets here create a project inside test i think that's actually better i don't remember which version of julia supports it uh, maybe 1.3 might be wrong there if you're only using the lts version which is 1.6 that should be enough so one important thing here is you notice that it needs a UUID and how do you generate a UUID? The easier way is to just use package templates. Of course, you can use the alternative, which comes by default. So if you just open Julia, you have a generate inside package. So why did I, why did I start with the package templates? Because you really want to start with a package that has the GitHub workflows and the documentation set up and possibly other things. Uh, I just, I don't use the package templates when I'm copying from an existing package. And in that case, I have to generate another UUID. I'm not going to go into details on that. We don't need that. So as you remember, since we are in a folder that has a project Tomo, we are already in the environment uh, of this project Tomo. So if I use alt J alt O, I'm gonna open, I'm gonna open a Julia repo. And if you press close brackets, I'm in the right uh, environment. So there are a few folders by default. The two main ones are the source folder, the SRC, and you always need a file with the same name as your package. So dice rows, which is part of the module dice rows, which is part of the package dice rows. So there are a few uh, guidelines. Some of these might be actual rules for registering your package. So we usually have our packages in camo case. Uh, that means the package and the module. I, uh, you have the GitHub repository with .jl. So in our case, it will be dice rows .jl. You need a source dice rows .jl. You also need a test .run tests for running the test, but I'm going to get there. And another good practice is to have a kind of name that um, uh, is understandable. So no acronyms or um, no ambiguity, just give it a, a long enough name. In this case, dice rolls because I'm rolling dice. It's, it should be enough. I registered a package with that name. That package already exists. And another thing that's uh, not just a guideline, but it's going to give you trouble if you don't do it. If you define some structure in your code, like if I define a dice row, name the package in the plural, like dice rolls. Uh, first, because it's uh, not for a single dice row, you're defining a module for that kind of object, so dice rows, I guess. But also because uh, you're going to have a module with the name dice row, uh, and if you have a struct with the same name, you're going to have a conflict. So be aware that you can't name your struct the same as your module. 
Okay, so this is the main package. When you actually say using dice rolls, this gets loaded, right? The module inside here. Uh, and the test is simply running tests. So the default run tests use the package dice rolls that we have here, use the test package. And this uh, at test set defines a group of tests with the name dicerolls.jl. Begin and of course, you remember, always uh, follow that same thing. Thanks for watching today's video. I hope it was informative to creating your package. If I have split the videos in many parts, I will definitely be reusing this uh, ending. Please like and subscribe uh, if you like to talk about today's subject. <laughs> uh, let me know in the comments if you have more uh, specific needs or if there's something that you do not quite understand. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.